I'm Kathy Turner, and today we're going to have a guest, and she is a young lady with um, a TBI at an early age, um, and she's going to tell us her story. And if you have questions, if you want to ask below, that's fine. But um, anyway, I'm going to let her just take it from here, her name and what happened and so forth. I'll be chiming in. Oh. Hi, I am Erica. I am 18, and when I was six years old, I had a brain tumor. Um, when I was two years old, I got a shot of a half shot of mercury, and um, it affected me immediately. And I do want to clarify, most of the time, parents understand. Um, when she mentioned the shot of mercury, um, there are have been proven that some of the vaccines have mercury in them. If you take your child in for um, shots, now they have had to update the V, as in Victor, I-S sheets. You can find them on uh, the CDC. You can put in whatever shot. Um, I can put a link to a couple of the sheets, but you should have that for every shot that your child gets. Um, but they are, you know, they've they've gotten rid of a lot of the mercury, but it is good to just check. Yep. Whenever I got the shot, my mom was a pretty young mom, and the doctor had feared her into giving me and my little brother a shot. The shot did affect him a little bit, but he was healed quick. He healed quickly, but for me, it was a little bit more severe. Um, but she was feared into it, and she didn't want to give the shot, but. Um, she felt like she had no choice. We as healthcare professionals should never force our beliefs on to another. Giving good research-based materials are helpful if we believe a decision is made that is dangerous. T. Barry Brazelton, who I was trained under, believed the notion that parents were the expert. Typically, parents have done their research, and they have a reason, and we need to respect that. This does not mean that some parents are uneducated, but parents don't feel comfortable disagreeing with the doctor. I started getting, uh, I started throwing up every day and I had problems where I couldn't remember things. And um, when I was six years old, uh, one day on a Sunday, we, um, we were like just resting and we weren't like really doing anything. And, um, my face started, uh, my, half my face started twitching and I couldn't use like half of my face. And I, it started in the morning and then, um, it like stopped for a little bit. And then the whole day I just started throwing up and I like couldn't hold down, like I couldn't hold down any food. So then at the end of the, the, so like after around like 12 o'clock, Papa, my uh, grandpa came and, um, he came to like help and just kind of be there to help my mom. And um, my dad took me to the hospital, to the ER, and I got a CAT scan. And um, I was immediately taken to the uh, Children's Hospital. Um, I don't really remember a lot about the experience. All I remember was it was... I got like lots of shots and I threw up quite a bit for the first few, the first few days. Um, did so, the seizures scare you or did you understand what was um, going on? I didn't really understand a whole lot what was going on. I, it was scary in the moment, yeah. but I, it doesn't really affect me anymore yeah. or it doesn't really affect me now. Yeah. Um, I remember like my brothers when uh like they had to go stay with some family members and some friends and I remember missing them a whole lot and I remember getting like lots of shots and I had it was a, a very scary experience at first getting a bunch of shots um so the way I felt when I was around six years old and this all started to happen um I just I it was some of it was very like I didn't really understand it and some of it was really scary 
um, like, the main scary parts were, like, me getting shots, and, like, um, I really didn't like when the doctors came to, like, check my vitals and stuff like that. Um, so some of that was really scary. I think the most scariest part was, um, for me personally, is whenever, uh, they shaved off a little part of my head to be able to, like, access my brain to be able to help me. But I remember getting, like, a little, um, like, patch shaved off, and I was really scared, and I was really, like, upset because I had worked on growing out my hair for a really long time. Um, so, um, I remember a lot, a lot of it was, there was, like, some really happy experiences, a lot of it wasn't ideal, but I remember, like, going through the halls and seeing all the different people and, like, riding in a wagon, and I remember being tired a lot, and I was just, like, really tired because my body was trying to heal itself, and it was taking all the overtime to be able to heal me, um, I remember, like, the doctor, the doctors were, like, really nice. They really made it a more enjoyable experience. Um, I, I really did feel how scary, like, how, um, scared my parents were. My mom was pregnant at the time, and, um, I can't imagine being pregnant and having your child, like, dealing with that. Um, but it was, I could feel how emotional it was for everybody. Oh why they were emotional did you know that it was a serious thing How, um or just... i mean i kind of understood but i was still a kid yeah. very much a kid yeah. but i understood to some extent as yeah. to why they were scared yeah. but um also it like i felt why and like i know why they were scared at the time like to the best of like yeah. to the best of my I, ability i could understand yeah. but um but me i just felt like it would be okay. Like I, I trusted and I knew that it was going to be fine. Mm -hmm. Um, there were lots of happy experiences and I had a lot of, um, people surrounded that surrounded me that helped me. Um, it was really fun having my grandparents there and a lot of the people came to, a lot of people came to see me and helped and my family. When, when the doctors came into your room, um, how was that experience? Because doctors and staff, by research that I've done, make your experience scary and bad, or they make your experience where you don't have a lot of issues later on. So for you, how did that, how did that go? They were really nice and they were really gentle. They made the experience a lot better. And um, they, I had this stuffed animal next to me and it was my stuffed dog and, um, they would like do all of the things that they were going to do to me, to him first. And that made it me feel better. They definitely made it a more enjoyable experience and made definitely feel like I mattered. Right. And did they give you choices? Yes. They gave me lots of different choices. So they let me, the they let me choose band, like the color of my bandages after I got shots or they would let me choose like the flavor of anesthesia and they would give me like choices of like what movies I got to watch or like what food I got to eat they would give me like a little sheet where you get to pick out a bunch of different foods that you wanted it was really fun and I remember um, doing that with my cousin and she would help me pick out the food and I would share some of it with her control is important for overall healing this might seem simple but control is essential. Support, feeling in control, helps coping. A balance of happy, yet an age-appropriate balance of the situation really helps the child or person. So you got a little bit of an example from what she remembers. And it's interesting, whenever we're telling our story, it's it's always things that kind of stick in our minds. And what you heard was relationships and different types of pain. But the relationships always kind of override everything. And that's why relationships are the most important thing if you are having, if you're in pain. Um, and we talk about that a lot, I know. What I'm going to ask her to talk about is her experience in the hospital and what she felt like. 
Now, you know, as a mother, grandmother, a family member, whatever, friend, on your part, it is terrible. And we do our crying behind the scenes because we're trying to keep the happy face to keep the child encouraged. Um, but what is the child thinking? And we're only talking to one, so, but I think she's pretty well-rounded, and it might give you a little bit of an idea of what children might think and what does your child need. Um, you're the only one that knows your child, so what do they need? So I'm going to, we're going to let her take over from here. Yes, it is totally normal. It was such a good experience for me. Mm -hmm. Reliving our stories or telling them can be difficult, but it also helps in other ways we're not aware of. Not allowing another to tell their stories feels unheard, unloved, and devalued. Sometimes when I look back on it, I cry, and um, I feel like that's perfectly fine. And it's not because it was a traumatic experience for me. There surely were some traumatic things about it. But when I look back on it, I... Like take time to cry about it because we had lots of help and it was a great experience. So after her surgery, she has a few years of recovery. And when you touch a brain, you're going to have to heal. Brains are not the type like you, you know, broken arm, you put it together. They have to heal and there are different processes that you go through. She's going to tell us a little bit about what she felt in the first part of that real, real healing time. Um, so as a young kid, I think the things that really helped me, what that my parents did, was making sure that I had some things where I felt in control. And that um, just making me feel happy and just like making sure that I was happy and gave me some really good experiences and that were happy. So that I have some ap happy memories to draw from. Um, I might cry because it's not because it's upsetting. It's just because <laughs> it's it's, yeah. it's got so many good memories. Also, it's got the memory mm -hmm. of other people who helped right. me. She went on to mention a lot of things that we have trouble with. And that is... Um, she needed to relearn things, um, not at all odd. But at that age, you're, it, it goes quicker. When you are young and you have a TBI, uh, and I'm not saying that it's a traumatic brain injury, but again, the brain has been touched. Um, her healing went a lot quicker than maybe some of us that are older. And I remember the doctors, you know, when I'm really questioning them, they mentioned age is a difference. Age really, you know, does matter. It doesn't mean I'm not gonna get well, it just takes time. And so that's one thing that we talked about is how quickly it, it happened for her. And that would be age. Um, another thing that we talked about was um, the fear of being wrong. And you know how children are. <laughs> and, you know, there are some that are very understanding. And she did have friends that understood. But there's some that, you know, tend to call you dumb or, you know, whatever. Because they don't understand. We don't want to surround them with a bubble and not allow them to experience life and, you know, that kind of thing. But we do have to watch over them. They are, you know, our children. But to understand that every child is different, every brain is different, and to teach them to be okay with being wrong. And I loved what she mentioned to me is that she was okay. She learned to be okay with being wrong, and she would go and research to see if she was wrong or right. Now that, to me, 
is a very, um, <laughs> um, whew, I can't even think of the word for that one, but that is a lot of confidence. How did she get that confidence? It always circles back to friends, family. She talked about grandparents. She talked about her parents. She talked about her siblings, you know, friends, uh, you know, her, her little friends. And when we surround ourselves with those who are positive, it does have a very good impact. And I think we saw that. We saw tears. That is Tears are the most healing thing. And it wasn't, as she mentioned, it wasn't tears because of being upset, but it, it just brings back memories. Don't think it's not okay to cry and don't please tell a child it's over. It's been X amount of years. You don't need to cry. You don't need to be upset. Let go, blah, 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 whatever. They are like us, and there are good and bad things that trigger tears, and it's fine. It's fine. I, I think that you have probably fallen in love with this wonderful young lady. Um, she is... I can tell you, extremely smart. And for those of you who need hope and that have children that are struggling, I think you saw hope. And um, as she mentioned, you know, there's a lot of relearning. There's a lot of fears that, you know, you're overcoming. But remember what your job is, is to love them and to give them space to make mistakes, and to t teach them how to cope. Um, I hope that this helped. And if you have any questions, I hope that you'll write them underneath. Or, as we say, message me. <laughs> uh, if it's on my page, since it's an open page, message me, and we'll get to the answers. Um, let me know what you think about this video on our groups that are closed groups. Let me know what you think and what encouraged you. And, um, you know, there's a lot more. You just got the tip of the iceberg, but what a beautiful story. And I told her, you have just said and proven every part of research. And kindness and love heals a lot. Thank you so much for listening.